Hi everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Welcome to Serpente Sunday for January 22nd, 2023. I have shown you many snake hacks over the years, ways that you can improve enrichment areas outside of habitats as well as improve the interior of habitats. And I've tried to get really creative with some of the things I've done, such as substrate boxes so this snake Marcel, my children's python has substrate in that box that he can access as well as different substrate on the bottom of his main enclosure uh, smagnum moss in that box which i also have a second level to that creates a hide and things that he can climb on speaking of things that snakes can climb on i try to maximize vertical space here's an example of a water dish on top of a hide so that those two items are not taking up separate space on the ground of the enclosure. Here's an example of how I've modified a cat climbing tower with all sorts of different items to give the snakes opportunity to investigate and climb. And here's an example of how I made a perch for a scale. I've also made videos about different ways that you can include shelving and elevated surfaces in your enclosures, anywhere from permanent shelves to temporary shelves to nets and elevated sky hides, as well as magnetic ledges and shelves that you can buy just as regular furniture and put in your enclosures. I've done videos about how I make the PVC perches and other perches and how I adhere those to the sides. I've done videos about how to attach sky hides to screen top enclosures such as this Zen habitat. And here is an example of a humid hide. And I've done videos about how to make these humid hides, how to cut the holes in them, filling them with the New Zealand sphagnum moss, etc. So this particular enclosure has a whole bunch of options that I've made videos about. Here is another sky hide that I've attached to the top of a Zen habitat enclosure. So I have done all of these other videos about how you can, in your own creative ways, modify enclosures to make them better for your snakes. I haven't done this one yet. So in today's episode of Serpente Sunday, we are going to talk about how we can modify enclosures to make them larger without actually moving the snake to a larger enclosure. So this enclosure is empty. The snake that was in this enclosure did actually move to a larger enclosure. And so now I have an empty three by two by two enclosure and it's right next to an occupied three by two by two enclosure. Same thing here on the bottom. There's a snake living in this one. Her name is X452 and I have attached it to the adjacent three by two by two showcase cages enclosure with this four inch diameter PVC pipe. And this has now doubled the size of her enclosure. She went from having access to a three by two by two space to having access to a six by two by two space. And so how did I make this hole and where did I get the pipe? I ordered the PVC pipe through amazon.com. I wanted this to fit very snugly and be very secure and not move around. So I ordered a four inch diameter pipe and used a four inch diameter hole saw blade so that I really had to work to get that through the hole, but it is snug, it is not moving. I did inquire on Amazon today before I made the video and the five inch long, four inch diameter pipe is now selling for $26 on amazon.com. And you can get different lengths and I'm sure you could get that from other um, hardware stores or from other online retailers if you just looked. I'm just letting you know where I got mine. And so you're seeing video footage now before the snake is actually um, having access to both enclosures. She is not in her enclosure. I took her out and I put her on the activity stand that I showed in the beginning of the video, the cat climbing tree, so that she could use that while I was fixing up her new enclosure setup. So I moved some of the items from her old enclosure into this new one, including her magnetic ledges, which were on the right side of her old enclosure and I've now put on the right side of this whole setup. And there she is back in her old enclosure. And this was after 
I redid everything after I sawed the hole and put the PVC pipe in. I put her back in her old enclosure and I wanted to allow her time to investigate the pass through and to move into the other side in her own time. So this is the middle of the night or early, early morning. It's probably three o'clock in the morning. And I noticed um, that she's investigating the hole now. And it's actually helping that I'm in the new side of the enclosure taking the footage because she's curious about what I'm doing and it actually prompted her to come further through the pass-through. I'm not sure how much I'll fill up this space on the other side. Her original enclosure was very, very cluttered. And I want this new space to be space so that if she wants to stretch out, if she wants to move around, she has access to the space to do that. So in essence now, she has a six by two by two space that she can fully stretch out in and move around in. And I'm sure that I will fill in the walls with more climbing structures as time goes on. She's not a particularly fearful snake, as you can see. She doesn't hide much anyway. I don't know that she needs a lot of hides in there. She just likes to climb. This is the middle of the night again. You can see that she's alert and active, not bothered by the dogs, and that she's starting to investigate that new space. This is the next day now. So now this is during the day on the day after I made the modifications to the enclosure and I found her on the new half of the enclosure. So this is her old half, which has a humid height in it and a basking area under her heat source. It's got this white shelf that she has always used a lot. It's got PVC perches. It's got a black plastic hide on the bottom. It's got a blue big giant hide that also doubles as a shelf and it's got a branch. Now, this pass-through is in the exact spot where her Mag Naturals ledges used to be, and she used to spend a lot of time there. So I've just moved the Mag Naturals ledges to the right side of this new half of the enclosure. And I've got a rock under the basking area in this side. Um, I've moved some of her logs, her water dish, and there are her shelves. And this is where I found her the day after I made the changes, is sitting on her Mag Naturals ledge, just like she always used to in her old enclosure. So I will be curious as time goes on how she will utilize this double wide space. So the heat source on this side is a deep heat projector and the heat source on the other side is, I think I have a halogen there and it's very low wattage and that left half of the enclosure is near a window. And so actually this right side of the enclosure is going to stay warmer in the winter than the left side, but I think I'll leave everything as is. She's got UVB on both sides as well. And then in the summer, I actually usually don't use any heat at all because our home gets so hot during the summer. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I'm going to do the same thing with these two enclosures. Worf lives in this one on the right. He's much younger than X452. X452 is five years old, or she's gonna be five years old this year. Worf is only turning three years old this year, so he's still small, but I intend to do a pass-through from his enclosure into that one next to his as well, just so that he can have all of that space to utilize, and he's a male. He's not going to get very big, so this is likely going to be his adult enclosure. I did consider drilling a hole in the bottom and making it a vertical enclosure extension. So you could drill a hole in the floor of the top one and the ceiling of the one underneath it and put a vertical pass through in. So in essence, it would have made a three foot by two foot by four foot enclosure. And I thought about which to do. And I just felt like making the longer enclosure was better because it would give the snakes a chance to completely 100% stretch out horizontally. Whereas if I made the taller enclosure, they would have had to stretch out vertically. And they do get time to come out of their enclosures and climb a lot as it is. So I opted for the horizontal space. Here's an example of where I've done something similar. This is my bull snake Rodney's enclosure and she does not use a heating source here. And I thought that that box was wasted. So I drilled a hole in it and I put an uh, 12 by 12 by 18 inch PVC enclosure in the divot that you're supposed to put the light in. And I drilled a hole in the back of it and in that light box or that heat source box in her enclosure. And so now she has that 12 by 12 by 18 cubby hole extension that she can leave her enclosure 
go into and utilize whenever she wants. And I do see her in there. I don't know what she does in there, but I hear her rummaging around in there and I see her going in and out. For those of you who don't know what a hole saw set is or a hole saw blade is, this is what that looks like. My set didn't have a four inch diameter blade, so I had to order one separately. This is what the blade looks like. It's got teeth on one side and that's the side that the drill bit sticks out of. So it first drills a hole and then the teeth around the circular part start drilling into the surface and it just fits onto a normal drill. So you don't have to buy any other special equipment. You can just buy a hole saw blade or a hole saw set and you attach it to your regular drill and then you're good to go. I use this all the time. I make the holes in the humid hides with it. I make the holes in the enrichment items and all of my pass throughs with this. And it's probably one of the tools I use the most. Mm -hmm.